Debugging in VR is really difficult. If you ever tried to read the console, you'll understand the struggle of waving your hands blindly while raising your headset to peep at the logs. I really hated this, and not only is it annoying, but it also hinders you from doing certain actions like using both your hands or even seeing. So I came up with a solution to bring the console into the VR world. So in order to create a debug menu in VR, we need to create a canvas and set it to world space. I like to parent it under a hand because that way it's always there and you can always just look at it at a glance. You want to set the positions equal to zero, the height to however large you want to be. So I'm going to set it to 400 by 200 and you want to set the scales on all axes to 0.001. I just found that, that those values were the nicest. Next you want to create a panel. Uh, remove the background because you don't want the the rounded edges or I don't like the rounded edges and make it a little bit darker and move it up a slight bit the canvas what you can also do is you can rotate it a bit so it's easier to read we'll do a negative 10 and the last step is to add a text reference so we're going to set this to text, we're going to set it to be equal to white, we're going to have it stretch to the width of the panel, and set it to 000, zero, zero or sorry, 500, zero, zero. and for right we're going to set it to 5, and bottom 0. The next step is to add a script, I'm going to call this debug.display. So the first step is to include the UnityEngine.UI components and then we're going to initialize two variables. One is a dictionary called debug logs and the second is a public reference to a text component called display. Then we want to create two functions, a on display or on enabled and on disabled. And then we're going to subscribe a um, log message received function to the handle log method. Um, and this essentially, whenever a uh, debug.log message comes in, it will fire off handle log. And the handle log takes three parameters, uh, a log string, which is the actual value, a stack trace, and the type of log that it is. And since we only care about uh, actual logs, we're going to say, we're going to check if the type is equal to log type.log. There's a bunch of other ones that we can use. We can use assert, error, exception, or warning. We're going to keep it on log for now. And then from there, we want to take this log string and split it using a colon. We're going to use the first part of that split as the key and the second part of the split as the value. And if it doesn't actually have a second part to the string, then we're just going to set it to a um, empty string. The next step is to actually add these to the logs. So if the logs contains the current key, then we're just going to change the key's value. And if it doesn't contain it, then we're going to add a new key with a new value. And the final step is to actually build out the text for the console. So we're going to create a temporary display text. And we're going to go through each one of the logs in the debug logs. And if the value is an empty string, then we're just going to say that the text is going to be, uh, we're going to add on the key and a new line. But if it actually has a value, for example, time colon and then the time dot time, we're going to take that key, we're going to add up a colon, and then we're going to add a actual value plus the new line. And then we're going to take our actual text component and set the text equal to that temporary display text. And then finally, I'm going to add in an update function here with the um, time and a colon and then the uh, time dot time and what will happen is that time will actually stay in the console but this value will continue to change and then we're going to also add a just a name reference so we're going to log the game object dot name so let's see how that looks in the actual game so as you can see we have our time value here and it's counting up based on that time dot time value and we also have our canvas but they're not moving like crazy as you can see in our actual console. These values are jumping around like crazy and they're not in a very readable state. So 
if we do it in the actual VR console, you can see that everything is pretty much readable. Um, all your values are there, and it's really nice to log things like I have also here speed. So if you want to check the speed of the player, if you want to check the, the vector of the hands, the speed of the hands, it's really useful for all those things. Hopefully this helps you guys debug your VR games a little bit easier than before. If it has, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I'll be doing more VR related content on this channel, as well as doing devlogs for the game that I'm working on. Thanks for watching.